I want to welcome each and every one online, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are watching me from. I want to greet each and every one of you. Hallelujah. I also want to greet our Reverend First Lady White, the leaders of Bread of Life Assembly Church. Uh, great ministry, great leadership, all right, which I am a product from. Hallelujah. May God bless them as they're watching us on YouTube. I also want to greet our um, pastor and pastor's support. May God bless them tonight. Hallelujah. As they join us later. Hallelujah. I know you guys have uh, geared up tonight. I know you are geared up. Um, yes, yes, yes. Each and every one of you. I want you to go ahead. Invite someone. Let someone know. Invite someone into your house. 
to sit with you, to watch with you. Hallelujah. As I'm about to pray to you, as we are about to learn, as I'm about to teach you how to fight the battles in the spirit. Hallelujah. Um, yes, we have learned a lot over the past few days. We learned a lot on how we should uh, fight our battles in the spirit. We have learned a lot about the battlefields. Hallelujah. And God has showed us, uh, have teach you. And I know that you guys are already, some of you are already geared up, the ones that were following the series, the services, as we were busy. I know you guys are already in your, in your battlefields. Hallelujah. You know already what to do. Hallelujah. You know already how how you should fight, what you should fight, hallelujah. And as God has prompt me to do this, I want you to go ahead and tag someone, tell someone, let someone know, share the broadcast, invite someone, okay? Let someone watch with you, okay? For those that, that, that are with you, invite someone to watch with you. Whether it's your boyfriend, whether it's your partner, whether it's a friend, whether it's your family, let them watch with you, hallelujah. God is showing me someone, you are watching me, and you have pain in your foot, but it's more like your foot have, like, I don't know if it's swollen, like it's got, it's your feet, there's a problem with your feet, if you are watching me, you can comment and let me know, alright, and I will pray for you, hallelujah, and I want those of you that have sent prayer requests, and you think I have not prayed for them, alright, whether I haven't said it is done, whether I haven't said anything all right know that god has seen your prayer okay god has seen it the fact that you are in touch the fact that you are here know that god has seen your prayer and god knows what you are going through all right trust in the lord trust jesus trust him that he knows okay i always say these words i always say that god is not a man and i'm happy that he's not a man hallelujah Imagine if God was a man, we would have suffered, all right? But because God is spirit, the Bible says in John 4, God is spirit, hallelujah. He's a spirit, so it means that he's everywhere. He can be at the, uh, he can be at the same time in many places because he's a spirit, hallelujah. So he can be there by you, he can be here by me, he can be everywhere at the same time, hallelujah, because he's not a man. The Bible says that in in in, uh, in number in numeri, it says that God is not a man that he should lie. All right. Even Job, Job says that he's happy God is not a man. All right. I'm, I I feel the same. I'm happy God is not a man. Imagine if God was a man, where would we have been? Hallelujah. Where would we have been? I I don't think we would have been here today. Just imagine. We're going to go into a time of worship and then I want to go over and share with you. Hopefully, we'll see how the Spirit of God leads uh, and how He speaks. Hopefully, tonight will be the last final of our series. Hallelujah. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see. It depends on how God wants to teach you. And I don't want to rush everything. I want you to understand. I want everybody to understand what is God saying. All right, you must understand when God speaks, okay? So we're going to go into just a few minutes of worship, and then I'm going to start and minister to you, all right? God, how good he is. God, you are so good. My God, you are so good. And my God, you are so good. You are so good. Too 
this one. And this one I want you to sing tonight. Why the answer prayer? God answer your prayer. God answer my prayer. And my God, the answer prayer. The answer my prayer for me. God answer your to God. Confess it that God answer your prayer. Alright? Confess it to Him that tonight He is answering your prayer. Hallelujah. Tonight He's going to answer your prayer. Confess the song. He answer prayer. He answer prayer. God answer your prayer. God Yes, yes, God is answering your prayer. Hallelujah. So he's about to answer someone's prayer tonight. He's about to answer your prayer tonight. Hallelujah. So I want to go ahead and teach you. So we have been saying that if you look in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 2 Chronicles, it's in the Old Testament. If we look at chapter 20, all right, chapter 20. In chapter 20, verse 15, the Bible says that for the battle, it's not yours. It is the Lord's. Hallelujah. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Hallelujah. So, like I told you, I said to you, number one, how do we fight? How do you fight your battle? How do you fight your warfare? Okay. So, number one, first thing of all, you are going, you do not fight the person. You do not fight the person. We said on Thursday night, first of all, we said on Thursday night, sorry, we said on Thursday night, right? Thursday night when we started with our, our series, we said that we need to be positioned the, in, the right, in the correct position. So your position needs to be right. And I told each and every one of you who was watching, that your position that you are in is the right position to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Hallelujah. You are in the correct position to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Then number two, we were, we were talking about the battlefield. All right? And I taught you, when you are fighting or when you are facing a problem, how do you fight your battle in the spirit? You must understand and you must know that you have a battle in the spirit. You need to take your battle into the spirit. Hallelujah. All right. I know someone has learned a lot. I was speaking a lot of things. I was giving a lot of secrets. Hallelujah. All right, it's for a reason and for a good cause, okay? So, we said that you must not look at the person and fight it in the flesh, but you need to address it in the spirit because you are a child of God, because you are spirit, all right? You must remember who you are in Christ. Remember who you are, okay? You are a child of God. You need to remember who you are in Jesus. 
you are not just having your flesh, you also have your spiritual life. And you need to make use of the spirit, all right? Then we sit in the book of Ephesians 6. The word of God is saying, all right? The word of God is saying in Ephesians, in Ephesians 6, that our battle that we are fighting is not against, against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers. Okay? All right. I know when we get out of this training, this teaching, we're going to be strong. We are going to be standing. Those that were down and out, they are going to know how to fight the battle. And then, I want to teach you furthermore. In the book of 2 Chronicles 20, 15, the Bible says, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason. Of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's all right other versions of the Bible say the battle is the Lord's hallelujah so what I like about this piece of scripture is that God is encouraging a king who is who is in a battle he's on the battlefield and this king is King Jehoshaphat. And God is telling him, do not be dismayed or, and do not be afraid. Of this great multitude, if we look at the woman in the book of Matthew 9, she had an issue of blood. And for her to reach Jesus, she had to go down on her knees because there was also multitudes around Jesus. And for her to reach Jesus, she had to go on her knees and push through the crowd to get into his garment. Okay? There was, there was a lot of people, many, many stories. There's another story in the Bible whereby uh, someone had to open the roof to put a person through to get to Jesus, okay? Because multitudes were following him. Crowds were following him, okay? Because of the medical signs and wonders that he was doing, all right? So I was saying to you, for those that follow the series, if you, if you only tuned in tonight, please go back to the previous videos and go and watch it again because it will, it will tune you in to where we are tonight, all right? Go and start from there, all right? So, we said that, um, or I was telling you that the multitudes represent, for her to push through the multitudes, it represents the smaller, she had one big issue. And that one big issue led to many other smaller issues. Okay? So she had one big issue. And that issue was the issue of blood, which she had for 12 years. But that one issue, it accumulates into smaller, it was, it, it, it brought smaller issue for her. Like for instance, she had to go from doctor to doctor, so her finances was attacked. She she had financial issues. She was bleeding. So you can you can just imagine yourself because of one problem, long standing problem of twelve years. Ratatatata. Because of the problem of twelve years, she was able to. Um, how can I say? She had many other smaller issues. But her bigger issue, her big issue, the big one, it, there was only one. That's why the Bible says she had an issue of blood, not issues. Okay? Yeah. So you guys are following, eh? And then I, I said to you, this, the people that she had to push through to get to Jesus' garment, it represents, it symbolizes, and it represents, Okay, the smaller issues that she had to go through 
all right so if i look at it okay it means that this the people for her to get to jesus okay there was she had to go through many people to get to jesus and those people they kept her back so she could not just go and walk to jesus no she had to go through the people and her plan was this to go on her knees on the floor and touch his the hem of his garment okay so she was at the bottom of jesus so she was went through the uh, to the bottom so she had a plan okay so those people they brought they the 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 people were they brought resistance to her to go and get to jesus so it was not easy for her to get to jesus because of the crowd if the crowd had not to be there then it would have been easy for her to reach to jesus she wouldn't have to go on her knees she wouldn't have to touch the garment she wouldn't have to touch the hem of the garment all right she wouldn't have to touch the bottom bottom piece of the garment you know the seam the bottom one she didn't have she shouldn't there was no need if there was no people if there was no crowd there was no need for her to touch the bottom you understand you guys get it i hope you guys are getting it all right but because there was a crowd it she had to think of a plan and she had to go down and she had to touch the hem of his garment all right she had to make a plan okay so there was resistance uh for her it was not easy to reach jesus okay so let me tell you what happened in 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 our case or in your case you watching me is that sometimes you have one big problem that brings you to jesus one big issue and that issue it accumulates into smaller issues okay so the smaller issues get attached to it over the years it becomes more issues more issues because you get more issues because of one only one problem it's only one problem that is making you to have smaller issues it divides into it attaches it attracts smaller issues like for instance this lady with the with the issue of blood like i said for her issue of blood she had to consult many doctors and for her to consult doctors she had to give her the money so her finances became an issue if she had an issue of blood if you lose a lot of blood you get weaker your body gets weak you can't walk so i assume she was not working so she lost her job so she's unemployed she doesn't have money you understand another issue unemployment become an issue and then also marriage become an issue because what man is going to be with a woman that is bleeding all the time another issue all right marriage issue so the one problem it brings a lot of other problems as the years go on the longer the problem is is there it's standing okay it accumulates into smaller problems and that smaller problems it makes you to lose faith in jesus it brings a resistance for you to get to jesus it makes it more difficult for you to reach jesus because you get tired you lose hope it attacks your faith in god you start you stop believing in god you get tired of going to church because it's been long now and god is not helping me the issues are getting bigger and bigger and not bigger more they are not bigger though for you it's bigger all right for you it seems bigger okay but for god it's but it's uh, just a mere small thing all right your biggest issue your there's one big issue and there's it gives you other it brings other smaller ones 
all right i hope you are hearing me so the smaller ones it's the ones that are bringing you more more they are making you uh to not making it difficult for you to go to jesus all right it it brings resistance it is keeping you away from church keeps you away from god you understand and those smaller issues the more it gets the more issues you have the more tired you get the more impatient you get the more you feel like it's another thing on top of another thing access uh, prophetess it's another thing and another thing all right that is how it goes that is why i say that the smaller things okay it is those people the people that was the crowd okay it represents your other issues that is making you not to touch difficult to get to jesus it makes it difficult for you to get to church it makes it difficult for you to get to jesus it even go as far as to let you it, it goes as far those kind of things because it accumulates into into many problems it makes you to go and consult other you you start using other methods because your problems is too much but let me tell you there is one one problem that is the cause one main one that is the cause for all the smaller ones there's one main one where all the smaller ones are coming from you are hearing me right all of you are hearing me well well right okay so let me tell you you this you know what the devil does he gives you he attacks you on one big problem and then he brings to you smaller 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 issues small things which look big for you but it's small and what happens is let me tell you the devil never changes tactics it's always the same he is not smart enough to change all right he, his tactics is always the same so what happens is that he brings to you smaller 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 things why to distract you to distract you from the real issue i hope you guys are hearing so the you get small issue to distract you from the real issue that you have so now what may happen let me give an example you have a marital issue okay yeah let me say okay let me say this you have a financial issue and in your financial issue all right because of financial issue there's no the finances is not enough there's no you know your biggest issue is finances so what happens now because there's no finances enough finances i'm going to take let me take it in in a, in a context of a family there's not enough finances in the house um it causes the 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 problem of finances causes friction between the parents so because there's not enough finances what happens is that um the parents start fighting all right parents start to fight parents start to feel a little bit of conflict okay but the main issue here it is not the fight it's the finances you hearing someone you are hearing right so it accumulates into smaller 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 things and what do you do 
how do you handle it let me tell you how do you address the issue how do you address it so what the enemy does he brings in smaller smaller issues smaller things to distract you from your big problem so now you are more worried you get worried about the argument between you and your husband you and your wife and then you forget your biggest problem is the finances if finances needs to be fixed then you and your, your marriage will also be fixed is it true you understand but because the devil is distracting you from the real issue you can't focus on the real issue so he brings other small issues you and your husband are fighting then your your mother in law comes your mother in law brings another story there's a fight you go to work there's another fight you get you uh, you get in the road you get sick you know so the biggest issue what's happening in your life it's the finances you focus on your sickness you forget is the finance the devil is not attacking your sickness he is not about your health he is worried about your finances another thing you lose maybe your job you get sick you lose your job what is your biggest problem it's the finances the devil is attacking your finances okay so that is how it goes so it brings in smaller smaller little things all right to attack to for you to get distracted for you to not know what is your biggest issue for you to not know what is your issue and to keep you further away from Jesus to to get you to be discouraged to be dismayed to be tired to be tired of Jesus where is God it's the one thing after the other thing sister just pray for another sister then she gets miracle money she gets healed and what you know every time it comes with a new thing to you then it's your husband then it's your then it's your uh, then it's your stove that break then all of a sudden you know everything breaks but the real attack is on your finances you are worried about the stove you are worried about the uh you know but the real issue is your is your finances i'm giving an example if i'm prophesying let it be so <laughs> you know let jesus intervene okay so that is what i'm trying to explain to you The devil brings in smaller issues to distract you from God. He brings in little things so that you cannot for number one you cannot focus on your big issue. And it's been for long. Okay? Some of you you have an issue one your one issue is it is a divorce that you went through. And because of that you have smaller 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 issues that comes to you. you can't sleep at night you you can't you know you are having heart heart failure you are having high blood you are sick you are you don't know how to you understand your issue is not high blood your issue is not sickness your issue is not you can't go to work whatever you can't sleep your issue is not the sleeping problem that is why some people they come to me pray you know when when i used to be small right when i was small um Uh, as a child in church if we go out we go and do we we were at church every night monday to sunday every night is church we were in church every single night all right there's no problem now you understand why i'm sitting here and preaching to you i was in church every single night since i was born and what we used to do we used to or oh, 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 if we go if we go to someone's house and we we those those people they are not converted in the house they don't have jesus so we go there we preach we talk we we sing we have church in the house and um what happens is i'm a child remember i think i'm 5 or 4 i'm, I'm a small child 
So usually what happens is that the people will say, please pray for me. Okay, now you pray for them. Tomorrow you get them by the roadside. Then they say to you, oh, thank you for the prayer. I slept very well last night. You understand? They slept well. But they're not worried about if they die now, are they going to go to heaven? They're only worried about they slept well last night. Do you understand? So the, what the devil does is he brings smaller problems to you to distract you, to, to pull you away from the real issue that you have, the biggest issue that you have, a long-standing issue that you have. Okay, he wants to distract you, and that smaller issues, it keep he keeps you. It makes it difficult for you to go to Jesus. That is why what happened to Job was the same thing. Job first lost his his uh, his family, lost his cattle. Then it, it one uh, one thing happened after the other. Okay, and at the end, Job lost his his health. He lost everything he lost his kids he lost everything the last thing was he was sick okay so the devil distracted he, he brings in smaller things small problems to distract you to keep you own to make it difficult for you to go to jesus because obviously you're going to get tired of god and remember when the devil went to jesus in heaven to cons to talk about job he said to, to, to G, he said to God, you know your servant Job, I promise you, if I am going to, to if you take your hand off, if God takes his protection from, from Job, then he can, can, can uh, attack Job. But as long as God's protection is on Job, he cannot. So he said to God, he challenged God, and he said, take your protection off so that I can, I can attack him because if I attack him, I promise you, he is going to curse you. That is what the devil said to God. Job, he said, Job was going to curse you. You see? So he gave Job many things, many problems, one after the other, after the other, after the other. So that each and every problem, maybe problem one happened and Job was still trusting God. Problem two happened, Job was still trusting God. But now it became more and more and more and more and more. And I think if it was you, after, the, after you lost your family, you already will curse God and say, no go. You understand? So the devil knows the more problems he will give, the, le the further he will push you away from trusting God, from knowing that God can help you. All right? The same in this situation. The same that I'm telling you now, okay? The devil knows. He, he wants to distract you with smaller issues. Small little issues. Someone comes around and our ladies, hey, we are, we are fast. Someone comes around and, and, and just, uh, you today, uh, good evening, Sister Lynette. So, uh, yeah, for those I haven't greeted, good evening, all of you. <laughs> yes. So, our ladies, we are fast, all right? I don't know, some men also, I believe. And someone comes around the block. You have just today, you are already, already you have a low self-esteem. Already, maybe something happened in your past. Maybe something happened uh, 12 years ago, 6 years ago, 4 years ago, 2 years ago, a month ago. All right, and you have a low self-esteem. You feel you're not good enough. You feel you're not beautiful enough. You feel you are fat. You feel you are, I don't know, whatever. You know, ladies, I'm talking to ladies now. Men, I don't know, maybe you also. <laughs> but the thing is this, now you have a low self-esteem, okay? So you decided, let me go. You, now God has, has given you, today you feel like, let me go, I don't care about self-esteem. You put on a nice dress and you walk down the street. And the next moment you find a post on Facebook saying, 
Look, she was walking down the street with a dress. She's fat, she's this, she's this. And then on TikTok, there's a video. Uh, they are mocking you, whatever. And then what happens is that you, what are you going to do? Your problem is going to come back, isn't it? It's going to add to your problem. You're going to feel bad. You're going to feel worse than what you felt before. Now you're going to have be angry. Anger. You're going to be upset. You're going to be... Okay? So, smaller issues. But the long-standing issue... What is your long-standing issue? Let me just put this thing on. The long-standing issue... It is your low self-esteem. It is what happened to you a few years ago. What happened in your past. What happened prior. Okay? That is your problem. Your problem is not the TikTok post. Your problem is not the dress. Your problem is not that you cannot look nice. Your problem is not that you're not beautiful. Your problem is what happened to you 12 years ago. 6 years ago. A month ago, 10 years ago, all right? That's your, that is your biggest issue. I hope someone is hearing me. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to explain it slowly so that you can get me, all right? So, the thing is this. The Bible speaks in the book of Second Chronicles 20 verse 15. It speaks about God was telling the king, you, the queen, say, I'm a queen, and the boys, you are a king. God was speaking to the king and to the queens tonight, and he said this thing, do not be dismayed, and do not be afraid. Those two words, he is encouraging the king. He said, don't be dismayed, it means don't worry. This may mean to not worry. Don't worry. And then he says, do not be afraid. He says that what must they not be afraid of? What must the king not be afraid of? The king must not be afraid of the multitude. And who is the multitude? It is your, your multiple small little problems. And tonight, God wants to tell a king and a queen that is watching me. He wants to tell you, don't worry and don't be afraid of your small little problems that you have. I hope someone is hearing me. Okay? So, that's one thing you have to do. You have to understand, do not be afraid of your small little problems. Okay? All right. And then I want to move a little bit further. Okay? The Bible says, For the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. I want to go back to the lady with the, with the issue of blood. She only reached Jesus. She reached Jesus through the multitude. She was able to reach Jesus through the multitude. So what did she do? She forgot. She, she did not focus on the multitude. She didn't say, my problems is too much. I'll never make it to Jesus. She didn't say my problems is too much for Jesus to handle. She didn't say I have too many problems. I get many young people, they will tell me, I cannot come to Jesus now. I'm still drinking. I'm still smoking. I'm still loving with someone else's wife. I'm still, they will tell you. You get, I know you guys also, you guys that are going with us on, 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 on the field. If you give someone a pamphlet and you invite them to a crusade, then they will tell you, I can't come now to Jesus. They tell you, 
I have this, I have this, I have this, I'm drinking, I'm smoking. I am still doing this, I'm still doing that. But I'll, but I'll come when I'm ready. I'll come when I'm ready. They will tell you. Why are they drinking? Why are they smoking? Why are they doing why? Why are they having someone else's wife? What is the long-standing problem? What is the real problem? What is the real issue? What is making them to live a life that they are living now? So those are smaller problems. What is making them to, 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 to not be able to touch the hem of Jesus' garment? Hallelujah. What is making them? What is keeping them? You see the multitudes. They name to you the multitudes. They tell you, I am still drinking. I still want to go to club. I still want to party. I still want to, you know, you know. All those many things. But there's one big problem that, that they have that is making them to love the life that they are living. And I want to tell you, the more time you spend with such a person, you will find out, oh, your problem is actually, this is your real problem. Or oh, this is your real problem. This is your actual problem. All right? And if such a person comes to church, then the tears will run. Because now, God will touch the real issue. He will work on the core of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? But what I like about this lady, she never allowed her smaller problems to get in the way of a big issue. She understood if I sort out my biggest issue, if I can get that sorted out, then I can go work, I can have finances, I can have I can get married. I can have kids, I can have a husband, I can live a normal life if my biggest issue is being sorted out. And I'm not going to let my smaller issues keep me back. I am going to Jesus and I'm going to reach him. And the Bible said she had faith within herself. Her faith was within her. It didn't come from another person. It came from her. The faith she had was inside her okay so another thing i want to teach you is don't worry and don't be afraid god was saying that and number two or number three it says that you must develop inside of you a certain faith that can push you through your smaller issues I hope I'm speaking to someone tonight. I know it's difficult to understand, but I'll go slow, as slow as I can, so that you can understand and that God can speak to someone. All right? And I want you to hear, you are in training for battlefield. All right? You are in training for battlefield. And do not take this lightly. If you need to play the video again and you need to listen to it again to understand what is God telling you, what is God saying to you. And I want to end off right now. I'm going to continue tomorrow night, okay, because I feel it is a lot, all right? I feel there's a lot. So when you go into warfare, remember tonight. Your smaller issues, number one, I said that God said, don't worry about your smaller issues. Second Chronicles 20, 15. Don't worry. And God says to you, you are a king, you are a queen. So know your authority. Know how much authority you have. If you read in the book of Ephesians 6, the Bible says, I've given you the authorities. Is it that? Anyway, to tramp, it's not that scripture, but anyway. I've given you the authority to tramp on demons and serpents. 
All right. So know your authority. You are a king. You are a queen. You you have authority. For number one. For number two, remember, do not be afraid and do not be um, worried about your smaller issues. Don't get distracted with your smaller issues. Okay? This is when you are in your battlefield and you are in warfare. Okay? And then... You need to develop inside of you. The only way that this lady in Matthew 9, 20 to 22, the only way she was able to reach the hymn of Jesus' garment, it's by having faith within. So I want to encourage you, and I know God wants to encourage you, your faith inside of you, you must have that faith that God is going to touch your need. Your long-standing problem. You must have that faith inside of you. That God is going to sort out your long, your main issue. It must come from within. Not from, not from me, from prophetess. You know, it mustn't come from your friend that prays for you. You must have, you must have that faith and that belief within. Okay? I want someone to say, I need to believe within. So it must be, it must be in you. You know, I'm working with patients. So I am a healthcare worker. And you know what? Let me tell you. If I work with a patient and my patient... And I can see my patient's willpower. There's nothing. You know, my patient cannot. You can see my patient is, you know, there's no willpower. There's no, and there's no, you know, energy. There's nothing to be healed or nothing to, to recover. Then you know it's going to be difficult with this patient. But if you have a patient, if I have a, if I see a patient that is you that patient will tell you no I want to do it you know then you know by tomorrow this patient will be healed or recovered or you know they will do whatever you tell them to do and once they do that then it's easy for them to recover from their sickness or whatever they have you know because because of within so I want to encourage you guys. It doesn't matter. This lady, and I'm ending off my words. She was low, on the lowest of lows. You know, she was, the fact, the, the fact that the Bible said she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. It means her position was low. You know, it means she was in the lowest of low. And you in your lowest of low, okay, you are at the end, you are down here, okay, and I said it is the right position for you to be in, it is a good position for you to be in, I'm not saying what you're going through is good, I'm saying it's a, it's a good position for your long-standing problem, it is your long-standing problem that made you to be at your lowest of low. And if you are there, you need your positioning to be right, but you need your belief inside of you. You need to keep on believing. Once your belief is gone, then I don't know. Oh, Jesus is need what, what drove her. I want to say the petrol in her car, it was her belief. What made her to reach Jesus, what made her to, 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 to push through her, prob her other smaller problems. Oh, hallelujah. I know, I know, I know many of you, and I'm going to pray tonight. I know many of you already, God is busy revealing to you what is your long-standing problem. And I want to tell you, 
I am teaching you on how to enter your battlefield. I am preparing you on how to go into your battlefield. When you are in your prayer closet, that is your battlefield. When you are in prayer, hallelujah, when you are before God, I'm teaching you on how, what, what do you use? When you pray there before God, you need to have an urge coming from the inside of you. There needs to be like a, a, a tiredness of your problem. There needs to be a belief that Jesus is the only one that can help you with your problem. That was her belief. It's no use you're going to believe that Sangoma will help me, powder will help me, a bangle will help me. There's no, a, a cup of tea will help me. I mean the tea that they read the leaves, you know. She solely believed that her last hope, her last hope for her problem was Jesus. Her last hope for her problem was Jesus. There was no, for her there was no other way. And that was her that was a petrol that drove her to Jesus. It made her to go on her knees to Jesus. It made her to push through the smaller problems to Jesus. So in your prayer closet, when you are on the battlefield for your problem and you are praying, you need to have a certain, not a certain, a full 100% belief in Jesus. Okay? Someone hearing me? And you not have to be afraid. You don't have to be worried. You have to stand up as a king and a queen. And know your authority. Because you know what happened when people are on the battlefield. They are in the prayer and they, the devil brings to them while they pray. He tells them many things. Yeah, but you know what? You are sitting here, you are praying, but uh, you, still, you still have, you don't have money tomorrow for bread. He will bring to you all those problems while you are in prayer. But I want you to rise up in your battlefield. And you need to you need to be, you need to know that you are a king. And I'm not saying a rising up in position. I'm saying a rising up in the spirit. Remember this lady, her position was right physically, but in the spirit. She was, she had a belief which made her to touch Jesus, okay? And in your closet, when you are down and out, even if it's just tears that comes from you and you can't pray, as long as there's a belief inside of you, you will touch Jesus' garment, let me tell you. Don't let other people tell you, if you can't speak words to God, God is not seeing you. No. Don't let other people tell you, if you are not praying loud, God cannot hear you. No, that's wrong. Don't let people tell you, if you are just sitting there in your prayer position, the fact that you are just sitting there, you know, God is seeing you. Why? As long as you have a belief within you. Someone say, my belief within. For people from the outside, it looks like they have gotten you. They come to your house, they say, why you look so tired? They come to your house, they ask you, why you look so sad? What is going on with you? And you blah, 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 go, ladies, talk, 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 even men. Tell them all your problems. I have this problem. 
amount of two, that one, that one, that one, oh, and my leg is paining, and that, and that, oh, and this, and this, and this, you know. You tell them all your problems, lekka, 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 you know. When you are done with them, you have even more problems, because now you feel bad. You are telling them, she went with all your problems to the street. It's another one, multitude, you know. And that way, your belief within, it gets shaken, you know. Your belief within cannot be, uh, it cannot be solely focused on God. Once you don't, uh, how can I say, I want you to have, your belief must be in God only. It mustn't be shaken if your belief inside of you is strong onto Jesus, okay, then nothing, nothing, no low can stop you. No lowest of low will stop you. Okay? I hope you guys you keep this one. The belief within. You keep it. Because I'm going to continue tomorrow night. I am going to continue tomorrow night for the belief within. I'm going to continue with it. All right. But I want to pray now. And I know as I was speaking, God was already revealing to someone what is the long standing problem that has caused you to be who you are today. And I'm going to pray to God to reveal unto you and you and you and you on YouTube and Facebook wherever you're watching me. I'm going to pray to God to reveal to you what is your real problem. What is your real issue? What is your real problem? Okay? God must reveal it unto you. He must show you those other things is not your He must show you what is your problem. Where does the other things come from? All right? And once you know it, you can go with it to Jesus. All right? Some of you already know what it is. God has already spoken to you. He's already revealed it to you. You already know where does it come from. Okay? You already know what it is. And I want to tell you, the moment you know, the moment you know what your problem is, I believe you, I believe you're going to get stronger from the inside. You, you're going to, the other problems, you're not going to worry anymore. All right? So tomorrow night, hopefully, by God's grace, I'm going to continue. But now I'm going to pray for God to reveal your long-standing main issue. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I pray, may you reveal unto them, reveal unto someone watching you, someone that doesn't understand your message, someone that is still trying to understand. Father, in the name of Jesus, reveal to them their problem, the real issue. The real cause, the root cause of their problem. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, I decree and declare strength within. Lord, believe within. Lord, strengthen their belief. Make it stronger. In the name of Jesus. Father, like the woman with the issue of blood, her belief was stronger. It was within. Give them a belief within a deep, strong belief within. I believe within that never gives up. A belief within that, that is focused on you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have a prayer request, you can put it up on here. I have two minutes for prayer requests. I am out of here tomorrow night. I will continue. Hopefully, it will be the last. I don't know. I will see as God leads. Uh, I want to tell you, whatever I'm bringing to you to, to this past few days, I never prepared for it. 
I never prepared for it. I was in my prayer closet and God gave me a message. And as I heard the message, God gave me, he said to me, I asked him, what do you want? And then God said to me, go and talk about the woman with the issue of blood. And I came and I brought it and see where are we now. We are, we are in a long battle. We are even on the battlefield. <laughs> and that is God. That's how I know him. I know him like that. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to allow God to set out everything he wants to tell you through me. And I, I, can, I cannot tell you when is it going to end. When God says it's the end, it will be the end. Um, and I don't know what God is preparing us for you for i don't know okay evelyn is saying pray for me evelyn i'm praying for you in the name of jesus may god touch you and may god deliver you and provide for you in the name of jesus novena say uh please pray for me as god leads you to okay novena that's a dangerous one eh? i don't like that one <laughs> i don't like that one there was someone she's here watching me she told me, yeah, anything, talk anything about me, anything. And then when I said something, she was shocked. So I don't like that one. I don't like to do that. I, I don't like that one anymore. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Novena. Cover her, protect her in the name of Jesus. It is done. Sh uh, Charlotte is saying, pray for my father for his painful feet. He is like needles father in the name of jesus i speak healing to every bone every leg every feet right now in the name of jesus i also pray for eyes that cannot see open up that eyes in the name of jesus it is done it is done it is done sister shalom she's saying my finances can you please pray for him my fiance sorry sorry my fiance Oh, my fiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's having a headache and pain in his neck. I almost said something. Whose foot is pain in your foot? Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I pray for our sister. Lord, our fiance, I command pain to leave his neck and his head. And I pray for our foot healing in the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. Come back and testify. This was mighty blessings. Straight from the throne of God, Bonita. From the throne of God, my sister. Um, Charmaine is saying, pray for me, my finances, my marriage. God knows everything. So true. God knows everything. Uh, I mean, what? Oh, I can't say your name. Marsh. Please pray for me and my family. Charmaine, I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. May God touch your marriage. May He touch your life. In Jesus' name. May God bring happiness and peace over you. And it's your finances. Let every financial door open for you. It is done. It is done. Come back and testify. I make for Ani, 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 I don't know. Marsh. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Anikusia. Cover her family. Protect her. In the name of Jesus, strengthen her right now. It is done, it is done, it is done, it is done. So tomorrow night, I'll be here once again. Like I said, I'll just talk. Because <laughs> I'm talking. I'll talk. I'll be the vessel of God. I allow God to, to, to convey to you and to speak to you what he wants to speak to you through me. And I'll be his vessel until he's done. Until he's done giving you the message. Alright? And remember, invite someone, take someone, let someone know. For those of you that doesn't understand what is going on, go back to Thursday night. And start from Thursday night to, to, to watch the videos so that you can know the message. And for those of you that need to get the message again, go and play it over again. Hallelujah. So that God can teach you. 
okay so that god can teach you for the and get you ready for the battlefield hallelujah i love all of you guys a lot and i'm out of here see you tomorrow night same time same place and shalom